Hey guys, here I am in my home, Monaco, and this is one of my favorite places because it's quiet, it's still got beautiful ports of, uh, you know, like you've still got the beautiful yachts behind you, but it's not noisy, it's not Monte Carlo, it's called Font Vieux, and it's uh, mine and George's favorite place. This is more like a family place where you can have casual dog walks, no issues, and you still get the sea, etc. So anyway, I'm not here to talk about Monaco, I'm not here to talk about this area. In this video, I want to talk about what are the ways that women can get rich in 2024 as an entrepreneur. And this is one of my favorite topics because secretly I'm a feminist. Well, not secretly, let's be honest. I want to see more women be a complete powerhouse. It's completely owning their space in business, in life, and making so much money that they never have to rely on a man. Can cohabit and live and get married if to, if, to men if they want, but of course never need their money. That's something that actually, if I could tell more people in Monaco, oh my God, that would be amazing because women here are just, they're not like me, they're not like you watching this video, they don't want to make money. They want to just find a man about 20, 30, 40 years older and live off them for the rest of their life, which is really not my kind of thing. And that's what I got me thinking, you know, the more I stay and live in Monaco, the more I get triggered to want to talk about these things. And so let's start with the first topic, which is, you know, number one, your relationship with money. Women don't seem to have as strong a relationship with money compared to men. What does that mean? That means if you tell a woman how much is a lot of money, they might come up with a figure, oh, five million. Whereas a guy will say 50 million, you know, like how much money do you need in the bank to feel secure? Women will often say less. And therefore, if you think less, you will get less. Now that's a big issue. So how do you increase your thermostat, financial thermostat? Well, this is why I moved to Monaco even for me. I am already doing extremely powerful things in business and extremely great things in business, but I wanted to do better, bigger things. So how do you increase your relationship with money? Well, for me, it's quite obvious. Get yourself into a surrounding where the norm is a lot, lot higher. That's why I moved to a place like this. Put yourself around high earners. And if you're not around high earners, then get around some high earners by going to the right places. For example, in Monaco, I get invited to many events, uh, you know, private invitations to be around the right people. Here, it is all about referrals. If you get introduced to some billionaire, it's not because you just, you know, LinkedIn message them. They don't answer, they're usually never on LinkedIn, let's be honest, but they will always, always come through a referral. So be around the right networks and, and you know, being in a place like Monaco, you can do this in Dubai, you can do this in Miami, you can do this in California, you can do this in all in New York, London, be in the right circles. And that's the best way that you will increase your financial thermostat because when they start talking about big numbers, it will also rub off on you. And you will also think, oh wow, Actually, I should be looking at making at least 50 million cash in the bank, you know, not just five. So that's a big thing for women. I hope you guys take that on board. The second tip I have for you is how powerful are your contacts? Something I really, really want to see more of is women with big names that are either in their cohort of, you know, you know, like in your group of associates or acquaintances that you know. They don't have to be your friends, but I do want you to have access and leverage and a bit of, you know, power play going on. Having powerful contacts is really useful. It really gives you a better positioning. And a little tip for you guys, if you want to get powerful contacts is come from a position of power, not from a position of weakness. So don't say something like, oh, can you mentor me, you know, to a powerful contact whatever you define as powerful. And now it could be government, it could be a billionaire, it could be someone who's got lots of connections for you, all of those things. But ultimately you wanna see how can I add value to that person? And I've done that a lot in Monaco. I never kind of pitch them to say, hey, I'm raising capital, can you give me some money? That's like the biggest cringiest thing in the world. I normally come in with, oh, what do they need? And I feed into that. So if it's, for example, I know people want to get an investment, uh, billionaires are always raising ca capital, you know, so I will actually bring them individuals with capital. So, or I will say, I want to invest in your, in your project, in your deal. That's when they pay attention and they're like, hmm, this person is serious. So try and get into a position where you can come in from a position of power, not from a position of weakness. Now, this point is a big one. I feel like women are not as good as 
at this than compared to men and it's how you deal with rejection you know women really do kind of take and i have to say myself included you know like when i first get into a position of uh, someone saying something bad about you or maybe they write an article about you you know you get big and powerful people want to rip you down right that's a common trait i see a lot of women secretly don't want to be wealthy or famous or powerful because okay fame is something else but they don't want to be wealthy and powerful in business or be well known is because they're scared of what could happen and what people could take away from them i.e their privacy and and you know their sanity it's it is a big challenge and i think i've learned it over the years when i first stepped into the limelight as a financial trader educator people like because i was the first in the world doing this you know it was nobody else like me so people like gen, you know men women they were just like who is this like she doesn't know what she's talking about clearly she can't because she's a woman you know and that's women are always going to be an underdog in many areas especially if you're like me and you were a pioneer in an industry for women you know the first of a kind as, as a female now that's going to cause a lot of problems because they won't believe you they're going to kind of think like prove yourself you know and there's a lot of that going on and you're going to feel the rejection because people won't want to do business with you all the time straight away they may even say horrible things about you just because that's easier than accepting that you might be actually quite powerful or good at what you do so initially that initial rejection is what i find women are not good at I have found men, on the other hand, get rejected all the time. They get scandalous articles written about them all the time. They get governments trying to sue them. They get they get in trouble with like some pretty big companies and they get into litigation and they don't escape the problems just because they're, they're men. If anything, they have to face bigger ones. But the difference between men and women is that they just deal with it better. They kind of take it on the chin. They don't let it affect their actual identity. They don't believe. They don't get into that imposter syndrome thinking, I'm not good enough. They actually still believe they're good enough and they continue. The difference is they find a solution and they talk openly about it too. I go to meetings and they're like, oh yeah, you know, one time I didn't even have accounting and I had this fund in the Cayman and whatever. They're such impressive human beings and yet they're not scared or ashamed to talk about all the things they did wrong. I love that. I've yet to meet a female that would have the same kind of candle and same kind of almost like they're a bit flippant about the problems they've had they they're too sh they're scared to admit any defeat or any kind of problems and i want you to encourage talking about them it's not that big a deal so i hope that made sense the next thing i want to talk about is your branding you know i think it's a serious issue with some women who want to be powerful they look a little bit more on the slutty side yes i said that word because i think women will get it when i'm talking about this don't try and look like a fashion influencer, a swimwear model. I don't know, like all the stuff we see on Instagram, which is great because they are fashion influencers, they are travel, but you're not really selling yourself in a way that will change the narrative for women who are power. You know, like if you want to be a powerful, taken seriously kind of female, then you've got to ask for that kind of respect. I'm really strict about that with my female mentees. I make sure that they come across powerful, not slutty there is a difference you know i don't want you to look like some uh kind of cheap cheap female and that won't change the narrative if you want to be taken seriously about men they used to having women powerful men with lots of money especially in monaco they are used to having women looking very slutty throw themselves at them because they just want to be kept women you know the kind of typical female escort right so don't fall into that category it is so easy for females by default to fall into that category so i'm just saying to you keep your branding sharp be really intentional keep it powerful don't underestimate yourself and you will see how that changes everything the way you are the way you conduct yourself in meetings be really intentional powerful not slutty last but not least women need to start supporting each other a little bit more and what does that mean that means try and find a way to collaborate i have reached out to so many women and i personally have found they don't want to work with me because they're either intimidated or they may not say it but they act it i can tell or they just instantly dislike you because you are coming from a powerful kind of branding etc women are get really intimidated very easily or they are just so competitive you know it's really quite annoying and when i do find some women they are uh, they are capable they are very slow at making decisions and sometimes they're just a little bit on the lazy side when it comes to snapping up decisions like snapping up opportunities that i don't like so i want more women to be able to say yes to opportunities if they're presented to them 
I'm always, whereas if I do the same thing and I offer a man a, an opportunity to join me in an investment fund or be part of the committee, they will snap, they'll say yes, they'll bite my arm off and say yes. Anything that makes money, gosh yes. Whereas women don't have that same thing, you know, it's not just about the money, it's about the opportunity, it's about the experience and the journey. And I just find I'm always getting more men saying yes, they want to be involved in the venture than women, even though I reach out to the same amount. So this is saying something, and I really want you to take that on board, females watching this, that uh, reach out to more women, but anyone who does get presenting an opportunity, just try and find a way to say yes. Stop making excuses, stop taking yourself out of the game. It really does make a difference. So hope these points helped you. I'm always trying to find really deep points to help my female audience become wealthier, because that is the reason why I became a mentor. A lot of my clients are men and I love and I will always support men who are entrepreneurial and not a misogynist. But if you are a female, I'm secretly always really excited to get you getting becoming more confident under my under my watch. So if that can help you in any way, if this video can help you in any way, then great. Share it, like it, comment and uh, share it with other women and good luck in your ventures and hopefully we get to work together if you want to work with me in any way capacity the billionaire project is how i collaborate and joint venture with people i offer bridging finance and i offer mindset coaching and i offer financial trading education so everything there i can help you with make sure you click on the link below and uh, get on a waiting list or get on my mailing list so i can tell you all about these events when they happen and you can join see you guys soon have a good one bye